Welcome to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. I am your host, Rob Gothier, the ET Whisperer. The Enlightenment Evolution Hour is a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Any ideas or opinions expressed by myself, the guest, or a caller may not necessarily reflect the same opinions of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Enlightenment defined. It's the state of giving and receiving greater knowledge and understanding about a certain subject or situation. Evolution defined the gradual development of something, especially from a simple to a more complex form. So what then is enlightenment evolution? The state of giving and receiving greater knowledge as we develop from a simple to a more complex human being living on earth for our soul's experience welcome now and join us as we explore our enlightenment evolution hour together hey hey everybody welcome to the enlightenment evolution hour i'm your host rob goth here and this is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Uh, we simulcast live every Wednesday at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. That's 7 o'clock Pacific. On both the ET Whisper Facebook page, or pardon me, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour Facebook page, and the Matrix Minds Facebook page, and we live stream to the ET Whisper YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Tonight is a very, very different type of show than what we have ever had. Since I brought back the show uh, last year in 2022, we have had the energy about bringing guests in and talking with a guest. And I actually was trying to get a hold of Bob for the last few weeks here uh, to get him on because I wanted to have him on, which is always a synchronicity. But uh, unfortunately, our dear friend Bob Hickman passed um, just a few days ago there on the uh, 23rd of this month and we have uh cola bob's uh hickman in here bob's beloved uh she's here with us in the chat room tonight uh on the youtube channel not on our facebook pages um so it's a special night tonight guys we want to share a little bit about bob but before we get into this i need to do the announcements as always uh for the enlightenment evolution hour we're going to have some guests coming here in the near future. Uh, ben Evans will be on very soon. Michaela Sheldon will be on soon. Um, actually, we have a, a few guests, but we just got to nail down the dates. I believe Ben Evans will be here next week. Um, also, for the Enlightenment Evolution Network, the announcements that we have is that the other two shows besides our show, Out There Talk with Valiant himself, will be back on air this week coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And that's at 1159 uh, PM Eastern U S time. And that will be on Instagram live. If you go to our Facebook page for the enlightenment evolution network, and there are two pages, one's a page, one's a group, join the page for the announcements. We will put the links up and how to find that show. And this Thursday coming up tomorrow, we will have, the Mothership with SPG, uh, Sierra Rose, and Lo-Fi Monk, all of them who have been on the show besides Lo-Fi Monk, and we'll be getting him on the show soon. Um, so Bob Hickman, uh, well, ET Whisper, uh, nothing's uh, in, announceable yet, but there will be announcements coming for that. Besides the Patreon, if you want to go to the ET Whisper Patreon, you can go check that out. Uh, two levels, twice a month we do extra channeling. Uh the polls, and the Q&A. So let's get to our guest tonight, our guest in spirit, Bob Hickman, Psychic Bob, as many of you know him. Lord Icyon. Lord Icyon, as many of you know him. And I forgot one of the most important announcements today, too. I have a co-host tonight, um, and a co-host tonight, the one and only beautiful sunshine of my heart and my life, Kalina Angel. Uh, she is here, and she is going to be riding in the uh, in the mothership with us tonight. She's going to be doing some steering. Um, 
Bob Hickman, the one and only. He's been a dear friend of ours for almost 10 years at this point. Um, he was a great friend to all of us, uh, a teacher, a student, <laughs> a person who did so many things. He was an amazing psychic medium. He cut his teeth into the psychic world the same way I did to the spiritualism church. Um, Robert, I mean, Bob Hickman, Robert, you can't have a cooler name than Rob, right? Or Rob Bob. or Bob, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, Robert, legal name, Bob. So uh, also he was a channeler and he did his psychic readings. He did his mediumship. He did his channeling. He did astrology. He did tarot cards and he did some of the most amazing videos. I think you said it was 2,500 videos. Over 2,500. He was um, a Wiccan. He, yeah. he was a witch and a spiritualist. And I remember him recently saying, yes, you can be both. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was one of the first people in this space of our community in the YouTube era. He was doing the videos well before I was, and I was doing them from 2010. He had a couple years, at least three or four, maybe on me. He might have started like early, early, like 2007 or 2008, even before I started doing my YouTube videos. Um, so, yeah, amazing guy. If any of you did not know who Psychic Bob was, uh, we're going to link his channel or we have his channel linked in any description where you're hearing this live. And if you're hearing it back on playback, whether it's from the Forbidden Knowledge News Network where we rebroadcast that or um, Conscious Awakening Network, the link should be in the description there too. But check out his work. And, and we don't know who's going to have access to his channel or if anyone will or if the channel will just remain, but we're hoping that his beloved gets uh, the chance to take back that channel um, and, and be able to keep it because keeping that up and keeping the information up is really, really an important thing. Absolutely. So Kalina, please, please tell us a little bit about your most fond memory of Bob. And I left two of the things out that Bob does in the videos because I know that you really want to talk about those too, because those were two of your favorite parts. Well, before we get into that, I want to do something in honor of Bob because I felt I know all of you have been feeling his his presence. It's just he has and has that much magic in him. I mean, it's almost angelic, really, um, because I've been feeling him so strongly. And um, most of all, my my heart goes out to you, Nicola. I know this has been a very painful time for you. Um, things I want to do. Light a candle and some in uh, and some incense. And tonight I've got lavender. It's because, as you know, lavender flowers are purple. So this is an or this is in honor of the order of the purple cord that he started. And so I'm lighting this so we get that purple energy, that purple flame. We've got the golden. Golden firelight started, and now I'm lighting a candle. And if you, any of you want to grab some incense, some herbs, a glass of water, light a candle, feel free to do so now. And everyone, close your eyes when you've done this. We want to call in Psychic Bob, Bob Hickman, Lord Ision, the one who was lighting candles and incense and bringing in spirits, bringing messages from the other side. Now you've crossed over to the, to the other side to be with loved ones like Rose, like Albert. Now we place offerings of our incense, 
of our candle, water, and crystals to you. Lord Ice Yarn, Psychic Bob, dear friend, it was really unexpected that you would pass away. But you left a legacy and more light on the planet than I've seen most people ever, ever share with this world. You always had a beautiful smile and a beautiful heart. I enjoyed the, the walks, the way you would teach us to connect with nature, even when things were difficult in the world, you always shone your light. And it occurred to me today that it's a heavy burden in some ways that you left. And it made me realize that even though you wouldn't push us <laughs> into doing this, I felt like, oh, wow, we need to pick up the slack. He's been working so hard and cheering us up so much and encouraging us to shine our own light and draw up our own magic and connect with the spirit realms that we need to pull that slack, but I really feel he is still here with us. And Cola, he is especially, especially still here with you. I know it's not what you expected, and that's very hard. So I know not everyone that was or is part of the order of the, the purple cord, but I wanted to suggest something, and I, I felt like this maybe was coming from Bob. One of the things he said was to make your own purple cord. And I feel like having a physical, because he's not in the physical anymore, having that physical cord is not just a sign of uh, being a part of an order. And you don't necessarily have to be a part of the order. But creating that purple cord, a cord is what it represents connection. So I am suggesting that we all make a purple cord in remembrance of Bob. We can wear it however we want. We can hang it up. But whenever we think of him, we can have this cord. And you can decorate it however you want. You can put amethyst, however you want to do it. And remember Bob and that connection. That cord is always there. It has not truly been severed. It's just... It's become more etheric, but this physical cord will help with the sting. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how I got to know Bob. Um, there was a video that he did long ago um, that had to do with the, the Arcturians <laughs> and the ETs. And so I, I at first my impression was he channeled, and he does channel, he did channel ETs, but he mainly um, channeled excuse me, for spirit. And it's interesting because when Rob started his path in the, in the spiritualist uh, church, he was looking to, uh, to channel spirits, but he got, uh, as Bob would more politely say, star people instead. <laughs> he didn't really like to call them aliens, but star people. And um, so, um, I, I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And so I was just watching his stuff night and day and found out that I was kind of a natural born witch. I was kind of doing things naturally that I didn't know was was uh, naturally the kind of the Wiccan thing to do. And we were um, creating these channel panels and I wanted to invite him, but I was so nervous. I was like, oh, he's like really you know, famous and he's so busy and I feel, you know, but I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm going to record a video message. And, um, I sent him a video message, um, inviting him and it didn't take long for him to respond. And he was honored and thrilled and we were honored and thrilled to have him, him on. And he has been on two of them. And, um, 
it was just really beautiful. And everyone who got to, to know him, I think just about everyone went over and subscribed to his channel, which by the way, if you all are just now hearing about Bob, please go over to spirit channel on YouTube and check his stuff out, subscribe and like, let's get him at 20,000. Let's keep that algorithm up, keep his messages out there. Um, but he was always so supportive, you know, um, like when we got pregnant <laughs> and he, he was very supportive through that whole thing and just very loving, especially when um, our daughter was having some, some physical issues. Just, just a loving, wonderful guy giving just, just, just genuine. I can't even, I, I can't even put it into words and it's been very hard and it's been difficult for us. We have two special needs children and so it's hard for us to get out. And the day that I found out that he had passed, I felt like he was telling me to get up and live life, go out to the park. Rob felt it too. And Michigan, like it's been snowing <laughs> and it's been cloudy and it's been gray. And for the past, with the exception of today, the past couple of days, it was sunny and no clouds in the sky. And so I was able to see the sun and you all know how much Bob loved the sun and it still does, I'm sure. And so I was walking around and I could just feel, but I was still kind of in denial. You can't be gone. You can't be gone. You can't really be gone. And uh, there's a thing that happens when spirit really connects with me. And that there's the wind blows in a certain way and the leaves kind of rattle or the, if there's a pine tree, it sways in a certain way. And it did that. And I knew, and I really feel, and I don't know how he does it, but he's that powerful of a being. If you all want to connect with Bob, I know he will, but he will connect with Nicola the, the most. Just know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, and, is, which is a good as it should be which is a great advice too because the channeling that we're going to show you after me and kalina share our pieces mm -hmm. and we're showing all the comments that you guys are making so if, if you haven't joined the chat and you want to say something to everyone about bob a, a memory you have please feel yes. free and we'll put it up on the screen and then but, the um, comments too um even yeah. if you're not catching it live um please feel free to share and i'm sorry i'm not reading them i if I do, I'm so emotional and my ADD <laughs> can't handle like the stream of uh, concentration. But I, I definitely any memories and things you guys want to share. This is this is one of the many spaces I'm sure that will be had to honor Bob. And I did want to say one thing. Uh, uh what, what I was. Sure. Say, uh, let me finish real sure. quick what I was uh, getting at. The part the part that Kalina said, um, Bob being a, a great psychic and, and powering through the life itself and transcending the death and, and try to connect with them is actually a very poignant uh, piece of information, which is something that will resonate and sync with the channeling that we're going to be showing after mm -hmm. we get done talking to because there was very similar question that came up in that channeling and i think uh it's something that will will sync up and, and we'll give you guys a great thing so when you hear the question think of bob and i'm sorry to cut you off go ahead mo oh no it's okay i didn't realize if, that i cut you off so i'm sorry no you're all right you're all right <laughs> i do that sometimes by accident. i don't mean to though i swear i'm just like too excited sometimes <laughs> you're all right <laughs> i wanted to suggest too for any of you that are content creators like Nicola, she has her own channel. Please share your link, share your link. Um, yeah, we'll put that uh, in the description too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is the nerdy side of me, okay, talking. I want to make sure to, that Bob's content stays where everybody can find it. So whenever you are on your channel doing something akin to something that, that Bob did, like say you're doing psychic reading or you're doing astrology or um, 
you're working with your crystal ball, um, channeling, whatever it is, in the keywords, if you write the word psychic Bob, that will help that when someone is looking for videos, it'll pull up along with your video. So let's keep him in the algorithms. Let's make sure that it keeps growing and that people find him. Okay. Yeah. The, the it's an it, unfortunate thing. YouTube changed its algorithms about three years ago, right at the same time we, we had to take a, a break where we were doing things weekly and monthly, and then we had to digress to only like four or five videos in, in a matter of two, two and a half years. So we took a big hit in the algorithms, but even content creators like Bob, who have been around since the start, who had a lot of subscribers and daily content nearly, still was getting shoved down at the bottom because... Uh, YouTube created an algorithm session. So basically, if you are a major news studio, a government ap approved source of information or mm -hmm. a corporation that spends money on ads, your content gets pushed to the top. Right. Even with the ET whisper, you type in ET whisper, you'll get my channel at the top, but rarely any videos. And then you get the horse whisper or some corporate show that's sponsored by ABC or some news article about, you know, uh, uh, eggplant whisper with a guy <laughs> who grows eggplants on a short story from some Fox or news or CNN news yeah. outlet uh, from across the world. So Kalima's right. If you guys want to keep share. Bob's work alive, share it. Share Continue it everywhere. Share it Put because... it in blog posts that you find. Um, let's, let's keep his legacy alive. And if anybody knows of any way we can can archive i know that ai is coming up with you know the trans uh what's it called translation not translation um where it makes everything into words with, I'm oh out. yeah transcriptions yeah. transcription mm -hmm. thank you yeah. um it would be amazing to be able to do to do that you know and hopefully uh hopefully uh cole bobs will be able to get uh the channel so that she can take care of it and then we can help her with suggestions but if you guys know how to rip videos from YouTube, uh, maybe get with Cole Bobs and talk to her because if collectively 2,500 videos can be done, then we can get it into the alt things like uh, uh, Odyssey, BitChute, the places where where the content is uh, actually filtered by the, the amount of times people watch it instead of uh, corporate payoffs <laughs> and, and then uh bob's work will be in lots of places at once you know me and Kalina want to make sure the the person who bob would have wanted to have it would have it and that's cola bob's and we also want to make sure that it doesn't fall its way into uh the youtube black hole because because bob was an uploader nearly every day they penalize heavy people who stop uploading for a period of time like they did to us. We don't want to see that happen to his channel. So share the shit out of it, guys. Um, I think Bob would really uh, appreciate anybody who had support of getting his videos and social media and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Um, we we, we had to say it. We know Bob was, was wonderful at getting the word out with everything he was doing. We oh, want to amazing. keep that. We want to keep that alive and we, sure. we only this is a 90 minute show guys so we only have a few more minutes before we role play on the video that we have for you which is a one hour channeling and interview kalina interviews him uh at the very beginning and then he does about a 45 minute channeling which is amazing uh, did you see that what cola do you have access to his channel she said she will continue sharing his um Let's see where to go. I'll continue to run and moderate Spirit Channel. Oh, beautiful. If, that if you is have the ability to awesome. do that, that's amazing. Oh. Yeah. If you have the ability to sign into that account as a moderator, you should be able to link it to Odyssey, which will back up automatically every video that's public uh, for the whole channel, which would be amazing. That, that's great. But we'll talk about that too. We've only got a few minutes. So I want to share a few things too. Uh, with myself and Bob, when I knew Bob, we met him back, um, I want to say around 2014, maybe 2015. I don't even remember how we met him uh, originally, but I think uh, Kalina 
reached out to him maybe about one of the channel panels. That's how that's how I remember. I'd been watching okay. him for a while, but I was yeah, Kalina a little knew too about shy him before to, I did. to reach out because he was so uh, busy. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, yeah. I felt, you know, like, oh, because we were just starting the channel panel. And, and uh, even though Rob had been channeling for a long time and doing this, this the stuff we were getting together was... And not I had got very... some big names to, mm -hmm. to come into the channel panel, yep. even though I was not a big name. At that he was time. one of the very first big names, too, that right. we got in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wendy Kennedy and, and uh, Lee Harris and uh, Bob were, were the three first biggest people to join our channel panel. Mm -hmm. So after we started communicating with him, he was so thrilled that we asked him to be in. We're <laughs> like, are you kidding me? You're the, you're the amazing guy. <laughs> you know, we're... We're just starting this out, and yeah, we, you know, we've had some good luck by so getting to, to be friends <laughs> with a lot of people in our community. But man, what a great gift! So we continued communicating with them, and um, I got to know him. And, and Bob, Bob had a side to him that was a bit guarded, to an extent. Um, whenever you deal with public co-creation, there's always a part of you that has to kind of separate um, the energy of some personal aspects of your life and the public because everyone who starts out um with the public ends up getting uh, close to people and i'm sure he's had problems through he that knew how too. to be real and professional at the same time which is yeah i don't know if i've seen anybody else really no. be able to do that it's amazing no and <laughs> you can't you can you know? be authentic and slightly guarded but i remember Bob was able to, after knowing us for a few months, let the guard down with us, uh, me and Kalina, and be able to share some personal things with us. And we were able to share personal things with him. And we got to hear him swear, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was great. which was great because Bob was very, very adamant about, you know, not swearing on the, on the family show. Um, so we got to get to know him and you know, he had offered to help our family uh, many times, you know, outside of circumstances that we were going through and always offered his support. And he spoke kindly of me uh, many times on his own YouTube channel. Actually, I feel honored because out of all the channels uh, that we, that are out there, um, when you go to his YouTube channel under his suggested channels, I'm one of two people who are there. So I felt very honored um, that he still really... Uh, appreciated my work and we always had a professional uh, a professional respect for each other but a friendship and this is the one beautiful thing about being in the community that we are in the place that we are where where we're in the middle of, of the channeling community and I know Bob was so much more than just the channeling community but because we have such a deep connection in the channeling community we've been able to meet amazing people like Bob and have real friendships with him. So these are some of the things I'm remembering from Bob, uh, just the amount of times that he really shared uh, his heart with us and gave us really good inspiration and a lot of love and a lot of respect in times where he was very busy and never, never needed to take the time, but always did take the time. And uh, that's who Bob was. When I do interviews and I, I talk about genuinely nice people in our community, don't get me wrong, I know a, a ton of people in our community, channelers, spiritual teachers, people, because I've been a part of this community so long, and me and Kalina have opened the door with a channel panel to work with so many people. But when I tell people there are genuinely like amazingly nice people, like they are the same person on camera as they are in person, I only have three names I think of. One of them's Lee Harris, which is an amazing channeler. The other is um, James Charles from Human Colonies. Amazing guy, one of the kindest, most loving. But the other one's Bob Hickman. Bob Hickman was what you saw him. And of course, there, there was that guarded part in the private side of him that only the people he really, 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 really got close to, uh, like his dearly beloved, um, got to see, but what you saw was what you got. There was no bullshit. There was no inauthenticity with him. There was no filtering with 
who he was to what he shared with you. And when he had a bad day, he'd say, hey, I have a bad day, but let's try and make it a good one because that's who Bob was. And I really, really love Bob. I really appreciate all of you guys being here. And Cola Bob's, we, we're all going to be sending love to you and uh, uh, sending our regards to you. And, and whatever we do, if you have a way where you can think of keeping Bob's work in, into the light, and into the forefront uh, contact Cole Bob's, which her her information will be in the bottom. It's time to play the video. We got an hour left, and the video is an hour. What yeah, do you want to say before we get that. to go? But you can well, if you'd like, or I can. Oh, no, I, I was going to say you, you tell them, but I, I just wanted to say thank you all for, for gathering and celebrating Bob, and I know there will be uh, many more. I had an idea, and I want to to uh, collaborate with Cola Bob's. It was amazing to see this because um, I think it was Pick the Pagan, right? It's the I saw, and it amazed me because I did this, and I had this idea as I was walking when I told you guys about that walk because one of my favorite things, actually my favorite thing to see Bob do was go on his his walks. And, um, and so I, I did just that, and I was like, why don't we do like a walk for Bob kind of thing? So along with this this purple cord, I think we should should consider doing as a, a connection to him. Um, if you're interested in this cola, get in touch with me, but I feel like it would be great if we all um, took footage of, of walking in honor of Bob, kind of as a remembrance, because as... Uh, as you all know, it's 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 like a very untraditional like memorial slash funeral that we're having, all of us, and um, that's what that's what I felt because he got out there and he he really lived, he really did. Um, as funny as it sounds, I actually had a very spiritual experience just watching him walk and then shop and eat <laughs> as much as I did with him, <laughs> with him channeling and and teaching us. For instance, how he would, you know, see um, in water um, and teach us how to how to read and interpret different things. It was pretty amazing. So well, he made the most mundane things spiritual. Very spir spiritual. I mean, no, and no wonder he's, you know, gotten his wings. So, you know. Anyway, I again, I wanted to thank you all and Bob, wherever you are, and. I know you're 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 here with us tonight. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your heart and your light with us. And may we learn to grow and shine our own light in the way that we can best and know how. Thank you for being a beautiful mirror and for sharing it with all of us. We love you so much, dear friend. We love you, Bob, and thank you for being here in life, and thank you for being here with us after you've gone. You'll always be in our heart, and for those of us who tune into you, we get a chance to be with you again in, the, in another way, and I know death is hard that mm -hmm. way of the physical body because you don't get to experience the person that you love in the way that you want to. You can't give them a hug. Mm -hmm. You can't hold their hand. You can't look at them in the eye and speak. But for those of us who can listen and try to tune in and try to keep that communication going, you can still have Bob with you all over. And you know what he said to help develop that, those psychic attunements for, for all of us, 20 minutes of meditation every day. Yeah. And if you can try to do it alone without distractions, was a real can be real hard for us sometimes. And but, uh, I, I want you guys, too, to keep going with the comments after we start the video. Mm -hmm. um, after the video gets playing for a couple minutes, then I'll start showing more comments. Did you want to tell me a little bit of the background of the video? Yeah, the background video is a uh, part of the Channel Panel 2016. I believe it was Emerging Beyond the Unknown. Was that one? Or was it? Shat, I think uh, it might have been. Integration of Light and Dark, one or two. No, the Light and Shadow is the one I have, which okay. we'll be releasing yes. later. So it was, uh, it, it was the title. I just, what did I say? I Going Beyond know. the Unknown, I believe I it was. Think it was emerging. Uh, and this was an online event. 
and Bob was part two. He was day two of that event. Uh, I think we had eight or ten channelers on that one. I can't remember. Uh, but it was something that was I think amazing. He was the one with 14, actually. It might have been, yeah. Been. And Kalina interviewed him for the first few minutes of it. And then he did a channeling. And he brought in all, all of the familiars uh, that you guys know and love. So instead of talking about it, I think we're just going to play it. There will be some silence for a minute, guys. There's nothing to worry about. We, You didn't lose mm -hmm. us. It's just us getting the video ready to play, but I want you guys to enjoy it. And I'm going to pop on my headphones. It's something, so unless sure. you guys attended this, you've never seen. It's never before been seen, except for the first, uh, the people who attended it back in 2016. So enjoy, guys. I hope you really enjoy this uh, never before seen channeling. I'm going to pop on my headphones to make sure and mute my mic. Uh, just give me about 30 seconds and we'll have this video playing. Love you guys, all of you, and thank you for showing up tonight. We love, love you, Bob. You. And here you go. Bob Hickman, also known as Psychic Bob, has been working with spirit for over 25 years. Since childhood, Bob Hickman has had a natural connection with the spirit world. His early years as a psychic were spent helping people who had haunted houses. In his 20s, he joined the spiritualist movement and was trained under various mediums of the Church of Two Worlds National Spiritualist Association of Churches, where he worked for several years as a resident medium, providing a connection with the world of spirit for churches Hindis through platform readings and seances and became a professional medium. Over the past 25 years, he has helped countless thousands with his psychic readings and spiritual advice. Bob is fond of saying, we are all on a soul journey and so we must view each other with compassion. He loves to travel, teach classes, and seek out paranormal adventures, many of which are told in his various books. When not traveling and doing readings, he loves to write, paint, and explore the mysteries of Wicca. Bob has over 20 years of professional experience in doing psychic readings. On any given day, he might be reading for someone from your next door neighbor to a head of state. Over the past 15 years, he has volunteered his services as a consultant for law enforcement with an emphasis on helping finding missing persons. Over the last 12 years, Bob branched out to build a successful psychic consulting practice in Alexandria, Virginia, where he works full-time as a psychic medium. Bob loves to write and is the author of several books which can be found at Lulu Press and on his website, which you can find out at www.robert-hickman.com. And be sure to check out his extremely popular YouTube channel. Spirit Channel is where you can find his channel. You will not be disappointed. You know, I love what I do. It's it's my passion. It's not a job. It's a calling. And, you know, I think like you're watching all the mediums today, you know, I, I see all of us. And I said, wow, we all have callings. And, you know, for me as a psychic, uh, and a medium as a channel to to be here. I, I think it's just, I've been uplifted today, I have to tell you, by seeing all the wonderful work. It just affirms me that I'm on the path of a calling, and so many others are. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, I could not agree with you more, and it's just, it's really beautiful, and um, I want. I was curious what your thoughts were um, before we get because I know you'll probably want to channel, and I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I I know when you're going to be channeling, you're going to be um, channeling. I, is it Rose or who Fletcher? Yes, who? I, I channel actually a number of entities. Um, Fletcher is my main spear guy. He's what I call mm -hmm. a gatekeeper. So he comes through me, but he regulates the other spirits. Um, and I never know who's going to come through, but I do channel an entity named Rose. She was a mm -hmm. woman who died during World War II in London. She was a big society woman. I love her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope she comes through today. Uh, I also have another guide who's actually a newer guide to me named, um, his name is Alfred. And mm -hmm. uh, he was a soul who, during his life, he was, a, from what he says, an, an addict to alcohol and opium. But uh, since then, he's reformed and come into the light. Now he's, you know, his mind is clear. He speaks from a very interesting perspective of looking at, you know, the, the journey of the soul as well. 
and uh, you know, I have the you know various people. I never know who's going to come through, but those are my main guides. That's awesome. I um, I'm also curious uh, when we get to the question and answer format later on tonight. Do you want to have your uh, entities take questions, or did you want to come on as psychic Bob to to uh, answer questions? Well, we can do either. Um, you know, we I, we can let the entities answer. It really depends on the the energy because my guide Fletcher controls how long I stay in trance. Oh, well, that'll let us know. So if you so guys if they bring me back, then I'll answer it. If they don't, we'll let the guides answer. Awesome, because they're they're always around, right? Yeah. Um, well, the two of the things I wanted to to um, bring up was you had had a uh, near death experience correct I, I wanted to know if um if if you feel okay with uh sharing that because i know that you were sharing with rob and myself the other day um a little bit about that as well and Wait, um yes. sorry go ahead i'm sorry did i i didn't mean because you no oh, you okay. know um it's so interesting when i was listening to uh, speak earlier. She was talking about her near death. And I have to tell you, mine was very similar to that. Um, I had an experience. Now, interestingly, this is where it gets very confusing is that time is very different over there. Um, I actually died. I was in a car accident. I was in a double collision and the car caved in on me. And I literally, like Kelly said, she popped out of her body. That's what happened. To me. I literally pop. You just like, it's like, boom, it's no pain but I remember being directly above the car. And what's interesting is I remember seeing the roof and it had a bent pattern that you could not see from being on the ground, you know? And I remember like I was above floating above the car. And then now a lot of people have a tunnel experience. I didn't have a tunnel experience. I just remember looking and I was just in the light. So, um, and it was when I was in that light that I, Literally, and I, I don't say this to sound arrogant, I saw God, <laughs> you know, the higher power, the, the being of the universe. And I even think the word God is a limiting term, but I saw the divine, as that's the way I put it. And I realized, one, we're all loved. I learned how much I was loved in that experience. And I got to see, you know, they talk about you see your life flash before you. That literally happened. And within a space of like, that quick, a snap, I saw every single literal second of my life from birth to that moment, to my death. And in that, you see all the situations, all the interactions, all the words, all the, it's, it's beyond what you can describe, but it gave me an awareness that we are, uh, we're all here on a journey. And that's what I learned is that every person matters. You know, you might walk down the street and see a homeless person. And I mean, I'm sure we're all guilty of this. At least I am. And think, oh, look at that person. They're all drinking and laying on the sidewalk, you know. But if we judge them, we judge ourselves. And what I learned was that the littlest things we do make a difference. They showed a scene to me where there was a homeless person. One time I went by where I used to work, there was a lot of homeless people. I worked in a city. And there was one day where I walked by a homeless person and I didn't have any money to give them. And, but I stopped, I said, I'm so sorry. Cause I had been through a very bad time in my own life financially. And I told this person, I said, I'm so sorry. I wish I had money to give you. And the person looked at me and they said, we know you, thank you. I know you would. Well, when I had my life review, they showed me, that that act of just gentle acknowledgement of compassion changed that man's destiny of his life. And I said, but I didn't do anything. They said, but you did. You treated him as human. And I really learned through my near death that everything matters, every little thing, you know, it's very easy. I think we all have this where we get in a place where we say, well, you know, F that person, excuse my language, but honestly we do. And you know, that judgment, that hostility we put out, someday we'll account for that. And so I believe that we're all here to love. And what I what I was asked was not, oh, how many good works did you do? Or did you build a big church, you know, or this or that? What I was asked was simply, how have you loved? And I tell you, when you're before the, the divine, and that comes into you, 
it changes you forever. And you really realize how important every day is. How have I loved? I try to ask myself every day, how have I loved? You know, and that's what I learned from it. And I also learned that we're eternal. We never die. We will live forever. And guess what? We've all done it before. We've, we, you know, I didn't believe in reincarnation at the time. Uh, I came from the old spiritualist church tradition, which just taught you die, you go to the spirit world, and that's it. But when I was over on the other side, I've come to realize that I met people over there that I've known from before. Now, I don't know who they are today. Honestly, a lot of that was taken from me. But we have all lived before. And, you know, I think it shows the compassion and the wisdom of the divine because we can't always get it right. And I tell people, don't be harsh on yourself. Just do the best you can. What you don't do this time, you'll get another chance if you want, you know. And I think to realize that the soul is eternal and that life is eternal, that everybody's part of it. We're all connected and we all grow together. And when we try to hurt somebody, we hurt ourselves. So you can't get ahead. You know, as a psychic, I do readings for people literally from all walks of life. And some of my clients in the past have been very wealthy, successful business people. But they've made their fortunes through intrigue and hostility and game playing and injuring people. And what they, many of them have come to realize is that that doesn't bring happiness. Yeah, they may have 10 million in the bank, but they don't have joy. And they come to me saying, why am I unhappy? And I ask them what was asked to me, how have you loved? You see, that's so important. That's so beautiful. And thank you so much for sharing that. And I thought that fits so well. Um, you know, our theme is emerging beyond the unknown. Yeah. And you literally really went into very deeply into that experience and by sharing that. Um, you also help to give comfort to people knowing that there, there is more. We do expand into more. And we really appreciate that you chose to live in lives with um, a situation where you would come back and share this and teach this um, to everyone here. It's just very beautiful and sweet. And you definitely um, are a very loving being. And While I'm in trance, feel free to interrupt my entities. They, they're they used to talking to people. So <laughs> you need to, you know, start questions or something. I, I may not be here, so you know I won't be able to be the logical in response. Yeah. That's like with, with Rob's guides too. Although our dip is pretty good at it, but especially if any of the humans come in, you know how we humans are, we can go on and on. <laughs> well, you know, I all of my guides that I channel, just so you know, for, for the viewers also that um I I because I come out of the spiritualist church tradition, my first connections mm -hmm. were with um human entities. And the in, in the entities I channel are all people who have lived on the earth. Yeah. Uh, you know, interesting, I know a lot of channelers do channel the alien entities. I have mm -hmm. had experiences where I have done that as well. Um, but most of my work is with the human entity. So yeah, that was Orion, right? You had a Orion video was video. actually he's the one entity who is not from the earth. He is a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Um he's from the spirit world. He's never incarnated. Oh wow. Um, yeah. And I also one time channeled a Pleiadian through as well. So yeah, I think, um, I think you had that. I think I had that video on there. It's, but yeah, you guys, like Bob has, and he has videos out almost every day too. So there's always something going on. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you like what I do, you can follow me over at YouTube at Spirit Channel. I do, uh, you know, videos there every day. I cover a lot of different subjects, mm -hmm. from spiritualism to Wicca to, you know, just my thoughts of the day. And every Saturday, Saturday night is when I do my channeling video. And that's called mm -hmm. the Psychic Bob's Saturday Night Seance. And there's and so much fun. Channeling, you want to check that out every Saturday. Very, very fun. Thank you so much, Bob. Oh, greetings, this is Fletcher here. Such a nice night to be with all of you. Might I say, there's a lot of soul glow present tonight. 
So many of you are out there shining. And from our world, we see you. And it brings us a lot of joy. Well, we've got a few people here who want to step into this medium's body and speak to you tonight. So I'll be stepping out of the way. It's so pleasant to be here with you. Since coming to the light, I have found a lot of joy here. My life upon the earth was lived in darkness. My mind quested for knowledge, yet I sought always to end that knowledge in my own self-destruction. I wanted knowledge of the world. I thought that if I read many books, I would have success. And it is true, in my younger day, I began a path that was assured for success. But I became enamored by the ways of the flesh. I craved a drink in the alcohol. I craved drugs. Opium was my drug of choice. And as a result, I limited my soul glow. My light was dimmed. There is a connection between the mind and the spirit. And if one damages the mind, one dims the light of the spirit. While in the body, the soul has an opportunity to let its light shine through the physical body. We should not denigrate the body as unimportant, but understand that it is a vehicle for the soul. When upon the earth, the soul's light is shined through the body. I did not understand this connection. And I made the mistake that it was a false belief that if I did drugs, I could transcend the body. In the end, I only damaged the body and weakened my mind and thus dimmed my soul light. Some of you in the audience watching have had challenges with addiction. The very fact that you are here today means that you have made great progress. When you seek the things of the spirit, you transcend your limited view. Some of you may say, this is very complex. It is beyond my understanding. But just know that by your very presence, by seeking knowledge, knowledge will be given to you. Over here in the spirit world, I have grown in the light. Upon my death, I crossed into the spirit world. Make no doubt about it, everyone crosses to the spirit world. But death does not bring one instant enlightenment. It does bring one, however, a knowledge that there is life beyond the material realm. In our material realm, we look at things in a three-dimensional way. We say this is real, it has depth, breadth, and weight. But in the spiritual realm, Things also have the element of time and dimension. Things are not static here, but are fluid. Upon my death, as I said, I was not an enlightened soul. And you will attain in the spirit world that reach to which you have attained upon the earth. I went into a place of darkness. It was not hell, as is taught by the churches. It was a place of waiting a place where I was given time to reflect upon my life. It was a spiritual time out. And while in that place, I started to realize that my senses were expanded. I had the ability to see and to know. I could see myself as I truly was. As I accepted myself and my limitations and my ways of error, dim lights started to peer about me. And soon I was raised up into this world that I now live in. Crossing into the light was an amazing experience. For I found that I was greeted by many who had watched me upon my earthly life. I found that I had resided in that place of expiation for close to 70 years. When you are in our world, there is no sense of time. But this time in the place of purgatory was a time for me 
to understand myself. Since coming to the light, I have come to understand that the human mind is not limited in its potential. It is unlimited. The spiritual mind can know all things, can see all things. It can understand the past. It can understand the present. It can understand the future. Allow your human mind to expand. If you think that you struggle with understanding spiritual truth, know that just the simple asking of the question, of saying, can I be present? Can I answer the question? Will bring you light. It is important that as humans, that you seek to grow your knowledge. Always read, always ask, always question. Taking care of your body is so important. I let my body be neglected because of my addictions, and thus my light was dimmed. The wonderful thing that is over here in the spirit world, the light is always present for us. We see the divine, and though at times it seems further away, we can move to it at any time. Time, distance, and space are not limited. Over here we can review the records. It is true that there are records of all that has existed upon the earth. I have begun to study them in earnest and many of my questions about earth life have become answered. During my time upon the earth, I believed and questioned the knowledge and the teachings of the people of the ancient civilizations. I researched Atlantis, ancient Egypt, and Lemuria. I can tell you from my perspective now that all of these places did exist. The technology was far beyond anything that the earth knows today. But in the coming years, I have been shown that there will be great advances in technology. Even now, the earth is moving forward at a very rapid pace. These beings that you call aliens are our space brethren. They also are part of Earth's evolution and history. This also will be revealed in the coming years. So the human being is more than what he thinks he is. And if you wish to make spiritual progress, consider that you are the light itself. You must breach, be reached beyond that which you know. You are not a body, you are a soul having an incarnational experience. And so reach for the light. You need not die to see the light. You only need to be present and wish to awaken to the light within. Do not look to the skies for the answer. Look within yourself. Inside of you exists the very spark, that spark of reality that will bring you knowledge, wisdom, and might I say joy. My mistake was that in my earthly life, I believed that joy was accomplished through addiction, through drugs, through alcohol. If only I could have one more drink, I would have joy. But in the days that followed that drinking, I had greater sorrow and depression. It wore me down and eventually extinguished my flame of life. Do not make the mistake that I did. You do not need drugs, you do not need alcohol to attain elevated consciousness. All that you need is within you. And if you discover the light within you, then you will have success, you will have joy. And being asked to step from the body, there's somebody else who wishes to speak. My name is Alfred. Greetings, my dears. This is Rose. Can you hear me up there? I do believe I'm in the body now. No, I must say, we're so very pleased with dear Alfred over here. Since coming over into our realm of light, he's attained such knowledge and such wisdom. We're very pleased he's working as a guide now for many upon the earth. 
Many of you out there saying to yourselves, how do I expand beyond my current reality? How do I give up my fear? How do I find God? How do I find my heart self? My dears, you do very well to ask these questions of yourselves. You see, my mistake was when I was alive on earth, I never asked the questions. You know, it's true that I was a member of the Church of England, and I used to go and put on a grand show, and I used to give a lot of money to the church. I used to think, well, I wonder if the vicar likes my heart today, you know. Oh, I'll give a thousand pounds to build a new wing on the church. You see, my religion, and that was what it was, was religion, was all for show. But what I'd really missed in my earthly life was spirituality. You see, we all have addictions, and some of us of different kinds. You know, Alfred, he was addicted to alcohol and to drugs. My addiction was power, prestige, money. I don't think one is worse than the other, actually, if you think about it. Because you see, anything that takes your mind, your heart away from truth, from light, will limit you ultimately. So many of you here today, as Fletcher said, are glowing with the brilliance of the spirit world. You have souls that are ancient, that are being called. It is no coincidence that you are incarnated upon the earth at this time. Many of you come from the ancient world of Atlantis. You see, my dears, the earth is at a crossroads now where people are awakening and they can either choose the light or choose not to go into the light. But those of you who answer the call of the light have nothing to fear. Well, the light is bringing you truth and joy and protection. There's no danger in being a servant of the light. There are many people who shy away. They have fear. They said, oh my, I'm going to end up becoming a religious nut, a freak of nature. My dears, that is not possible for those who truly follow the spirit. Do not make the mistake that I did, that thinking, well, if I just give some money to the church, it's all good and well. There was nothing wrong with giving money away and helping those in need. But do not limit yourself to thinking, well, if I throw a few pounds in the coffer, all's well. No, my dears, you're being called to serve. There are those here today who are saying to yourselves, how do I serve? I'm so limited, I have no money. I have nothing. I cannot even afford to have a computer to write an email. Well, you know, my dears, I was around before all of this technology, and I must say, I'm even a bit overwhelmed by it myself. But you know, our medium is helping us to understand how to, to work through it. And you'll see, it is not about finances or material things. It is about hearing the call of the spirit world. All you're required to do is to simply say yes. Say yes today to your heart. Say yes, I will be of service. You see, many people never start because they have a fear. They say, well, I can't go and save all the starving people of the world. Therefore, I won't start. It's too big of a project. My dears, you must start with where you are. Look around. Perhaps there's a neighbor around you, somebody who's a shut-in. And they think to the, you may think to yourself, well, you know, Mrs. Jones across the street's all alone. She's a widow, no family. You see, you could go visit her. If you would go and take her a little flower, a cake, it would bring great joy to her. In doing this, you would transcend yourself and you would be doing the work of the spirit world. When you have those promptings, you say, maybe I should go do some good. I'd Help a charity foundation. This prompting comes from your higher self. Inside of you, there is that spark, that eternal light. 
And you'll see that is what gives you power. And when the task before you looks daunting, you have to simply say, higher self, give me the power, make it possible. For those of you who are being called by the spirit world, you will find that a simple yes will open many doors for you. Do not, as I said, think that you must change the whole world. If you can reach one person in your life and bring them awareness of goodness, and you will be a great soul over here. When I first died, you see, like Alfred, I went to that place of darkness. It was a purgatory realm. And when I was there, I had an awareness. You say I was so spiritually blind. I thought, well, there's nothing here. Where am I? I suppose I should explain to you about my death, you see. I was very arrogant in my earthly life. And it was during World War II. London was on a black cap. Hitler's planes were bombing us. And we were not supposed to leave our homes, but I was very arrogant. I said, I should not stay in this house one moment longer. And I went out wandering in the streets. Can you imagine where mad I must have been? But you know what happened was that I was hit by a lorry, struck down in the street in the darkness. And you know, I found myself in that place of darkness. I thought I'd fallen in a pit or something. And I wandered in this darkness for many years. And you know, one day an angel came to me, a beautiful being of light. He said, Rose, take my hand. We're leading you over into the place where you will grow now. You're ready. I said, who are you? Go away. I don't know you. You know, the daftness of me to, to turn away an angel. But you see, this is what I was, what I was reduced to, my dear. Because throughout my life, I did not let spirituality into my soul. It's you have an opportunity right now to let the light of spirit into your soul. It does not require becoming a fanatic and preaching in the streets. Your true spirituality is found in silence, in quiet meditation and contemplation. This is where the work of the spirit is done. So if you want to move beyond your present state, if you want to transcend your reality, start going within. Now you go within yourself. That light that you discover will then allow you to be empowered to work in the outer world. All of the worlds are actually intimately connected. You see, my dears, there's a false belief that heaven is far away and we're down here on the earth, and God has forgotten us. He's in his heaven, and all is well. My dears, these are all myths. We must discard them. The spirit world is literally here upon the earth. We're only separated by a thin veil of vibration. You see, when we come through our medium and we enter his body, we simply lower our vibration to be closer to the physical realm. And if you meditate and pray, you raise your vibration and then you are in the spiritual realm. And so the, the veils between the worlds are simply that, veils. They are not brick walls and you are not limited. So do not have fear about that if you are prepared for the higher realms. Do not wonder if you are able to transcend yourself. It is not an issue of working harder. It's simply an issue of awareness. Allow yourself to be aware. Allow yourself to know that you can be in the light simply, simply by wanting to be in the light. You know, I have to tell you a funny story, you know. I used to have very grand parties at my house. I lived in the Mayfair district of London. And people used to come all around the world, ambassadors and executives, all sorts of important, posh people. And one day I ran to the church. I was very nervous because I had 
ambassadors coming that I knew the countries weren't getting on well and I'd made the mistake of inviting them both. And I went to my vicar at the church. I said, vicar, oh dear, I don't know what to do. I've invited these people. It could be a political situation and they're not really friendly and they won't get on well. And you know, my dear, I don't, I can't uninvite them for that would create a drama. What shall I do? And he said, Rose, have you asked God to be part of your dinner party? I said, what are you talking about? He says, have you prayed about it? Have you invited God into your dinner party? I said, well, no, I'm not going to be thinking about of that, you see. And he said, that's your answer, my dear. You must invite God into your dinner party. And you know what? I went home and I thought about that. I said, well, you know, it can't hurt. I offered up a prayer, you know, half-hearted, I suppose. I said, well, God, if you can sort this mess out, I'll let you sit with us. And you know, the evening went off brilliantly. But you see, my world was focused on only material reality. And even though I went to church regularly, I had forgotten that there was a spiritual realm that we could invite in. And so when you find yourselves in this situation where the material world is closing in about you, and you'll say, there is no way out, I'm going to remind you, have you invited God to your situation? People believe that communication with our world is some complex process, that only special and gifted people can talk to the spirit world. My dears, we are so close, we're only a whisper away. And so I invite you, just reach out, ask for us. Say, spirit people, will you help me? I don't believe in God today. I'm not believing in anything. Spirit people, will you help me? The way seems dark. Spirit people, will you help me? If you want, you can even call me my name. My name is Rose. And I will come and help you. You can call on Fletcher or Alfred. There are so many of us who want to come and be of service to all of you. But to understand how to do it is not complex. Remember, simply ask. You know, when I first arrived in the spirit world, I was awed by the light. I remember my body was a gray, dingy sort of color. And I looked at my body and I thought, oh, these beings of light, how will I ever fit in here? And it became very self-conscious. You see, it's very true that the amount of light that you let into your spirit on the earth will be seen in the other side. You cannot hide who you are. So it's best to be honest. You know, when I saw the angels over here and the other guides and the beings of light, I was so ashamed. I thought I'd spent my life mocking spirituality. Really, I was. And I thought, this is the result. Now I have to show up looking dingy for the party. And I had a lovely lady who took me aside. And I said, my dear, do you have anything better I can wear? I said, you know, these clothes I've got on, they look dingy compared to all of your robes. And she said, no, Rose, we can't dress you up. You have to earn your light. And I said, my dear, how am I supposed to do that? She said, if you want the light and you allow it into your life, you will glow. I said, is that simple? How do you do that? And she said, ask for it. And you know, I said, Light, I, I want you. I want you in my life, Light. I do you know what happened, my dears. I began to glow. The most brilliance that I've ever encountered. I've never seen an earthly light like this. And she said, very good. Each day, if you ask for it, you'll glow a little brighter. You know, there are still beings brighter than me over here. But the wonderful thing is that in the spirit world, Progress never ends. The truth is over here, no one really ever dies. And you can grow beyond anything in your mind. 
the human mind has two elements, the physical brain, which can do amazing things. But overshadowing that is the spiritual mind. And the spiritual mind is unlimited. When you come back to our world, to the light, you will remember that you've been here before. Strangely, after a little while, I even started to remember that I somehow knew about the light. They explained to me that when I was born into the earth, the veil of forgetfulness was put over me. And like most humans, we go through our earthly lives, wandering about and thinking, oh, well, this is all there is. But this veil of forgetfulness is actually a protection. It's given to us so that we won't be homesick. If you could remember everything about our world, about the spirit world, you'd never be able to live a day upon the earth. So the fact that you forget is partially built in. But even in those moments where you feel despair, there's still the very spark within you. And it is important that you remember to look for that spark. Some of you here tonight have crossed through periods of your lives where you've thought of destroying yourself, of committing suicide. It won't get you anywhere, my dear. It's like failing a class. They'll make you come back again. You know, I had moments in my own life where I thought, well, I might as well end it all. Seen it all, done it all, bored with life, angry at the world. But you know, really, ultimately, that would not have got me anywhere. And I'm so thankful, truly, I'm very thankful. I did not do that. Please try to remember that within each of you is that light. That light is your power. It will give you anything that you need. And it will take you home at the end of your time. Just a moment, my dear. Fletcher wishes to speak. Oh, there we go. Give us just a moment while we adjust the vibration of the medium's body. Well, we'll let Miss Rose come back and finish talking. So you see, my dears, it's so very important that you always ask, call upon me. I should like to help you to transcend your reality. Do not limit yourself to think you're merely the body. If you're watching tonight, you think, well, I don't know if I believe all of this spiritual talk. You're not alone. I felt the same way at times in my own life. But the truth is that all of us eventually return back to the light. And how you return is up to you. God does not compel the soul to follow one path and force his way. The joy of life is that when you are born, well, actually, my dear, I told you, before you're born, you choose your course. And when you come here, there's a whole plethora of people over here supporting and guiding you. So no soul is ever truly alone. And this is where joy is found. If you're feeling alone, you call upon our world. We will give you our presence. You will feel our comfort. And you will not fear. My dears, are there any who wish to speak to me? I am so pleased to be here with you. And I should like to answer your questions. Wonderful. Thank you for being here with us, Rose. My pleasure, my dear. And I have to say, I, I really love you. <laughs> I, I you talk to you quite too, often. My <laughs> you know, I tell you, as a British, I was stiff off the lips. It's a little hard to be emotional, but I've learned, you know, working with this American here, I've learned to be a little more emotive. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yes, Bob is great. Um, 
Well, I have a que um, question from Susan. She says, a dear friend and wonderful psychic channeler, Robert W. Johnson, just passed over in March. I know he has been around me and giving me science. Any communication you are able to give me will be greatly, appreci greatly appreciated. Hey, my dear, it is a being of the light, like yourself. You also are a being of the light. Your dear friend will come to you, but you must keep talking with him. You see, my dear, the thing is that many humans become impatient with our world. And they say, well, I called upon my friend, but I didn't hear from them. And then they give up on them. Do not give up. Continue to speak. He wants you to carry on with his teachings. The things that he brought to your life were light for your spirit. And if you want to honor him, honor the, his teachings, honor the spirit. Do not think that you're not worthy or think, who am I? I'm not a great person like he was. No, my dear, he's drawn to you because of your light. He knows your full potential. You are far greater than you know. And so listen for his messages and share them with others. And then you will be doing the work of the spirit as well as granting his soul a lot of joy. You know, see over here, the problem is that many of us reach out to humans, but we're constantly ignored. You have no idea, my dear, how challenging it is as a spirit guide. We so often want to help, but yet we cannot force our way in. And when we find a soul such as yourself, who can receive our presence, oh, my dear, you cannot imagine the joy that we have. Your friend is very much in the light and guided room. It would do you well to write down your messages from him. In this way, you will be able to disseminate them. Because in your future, my dear, you will write a book about your experiences. And this is something that he wishes for you. And all of heaven will help you. So continue to speak, continue to ask, continue to listen. And please write down what he tells you, my dear. And then you will be doing a great and glorious work. Thank you so much, Rose. That's so beautiful. All right, let's see who we have next. Um, Shelly says, who is my main spirit guide and how can we all better connect to our spirit guides? Thank you very much for your time. Oh, my dear. We well, you know you have many, many spirit people around. I'm sure. One in particular. It is Archangel Metatron. Some call him an ascended master. Some call him an angel. I suppose he's a bit of both, really. But Metatron is working with you now, my dear. For you've been doing a lot of processing, a lot of clearing out of your spirit. And you've been asking for more light. And Metatron is coming in that you will adjust your frequency to raise your vibration. If you wish to connect to our world, simply as I've said, talk, ask, speak. Do not worry if others think you're mad and say, you're talking to the sky. Well, you know, my dear, it doesn't matter whether you talk to the sky or not. The fact is, we will get your message. My dear, if I may, I should like to also come and work with you. I see around you beautiful light. You have such openness of heart. And if you would allow me to come, I would help raise your vibration. So continue to ask. It's very important, my dear, that you stick time every day to commune with us. We can only meet with you if you allow us. You see, the law of the universe is that we cannot interfere unless we are invited. And if you will give me a schedule, if you say, my Rose, will you meet with me at four o'clock every day? then I shall know to be there. Because many humans make the mistake of thinking that, well, I'll just call my spirits whenever. 
But you know, the truth is we have a very busy life over here. And so we also appreciate greatly the opportunity to be informed of when we are needed. And you will find that we'll be able to be of more service if you would invite us at a specific time each day. And then we know to be there. I hope that helps you, my dear. That's amazing. Thank you, Rose. My pleasure, my dear. We have a question from Aaron who says, please, can you give me some information that will be of great help to me? Well, you'll see, my dear, you're coursing through a time of challenge in your own soul. This last year for you has been one of great growth. You've tried to understand the balance between the material world and the spiritual world. And might we say you've done quite a good job with it. We also see that you've struggled with depression somewhat. But we see healing around you. And as you cross into the month of December, the light around you becomes very bright. And you will find yourself feeling very much even more alive than you do today. You've crossed through those times of struggle where you felt despair. But you see, the fact that you are here today means that you have heard our call. And you are drawn here by spirit. You're not here by accident. And this struggle that you cross through is not without meaning. You are being given light and healing because in your future you will heal others. So remember the lessons that you have learned. Take them into your soul. Journal, my dear. It's so important. You know, when humans write, they remember twice. And so write your sorrows, write your hopes, write your dreams. Most of all, write our messages. You've been getting fleeting glimpses and words from us. Some have come in dreams, but you have wondered, is that really true? Is it my mind? We are speaking to you, my dear. Please write us down, write down our words. Let us be of assistance to you. In December, you will begin a new path. It will be one of joy, one of peace. Do not fear. You're not destined to be alone. Though at this time, you may feel somewhat of aloneness. We are with you, my dear. And we love you greatly. We send our blessings to you. That is so beautiful. And we have time for two more questions, if um, everything feels all right with Bob's body. Yes, Fletcher says I can stay a little longer. Okay, great. Just wanted to check in, make sure everything was okay. Uh, we have a question from Anusha, who says, how do I calm my high energy and highly active nervous system for good? Why am I so electrified regularly? Well, see, my dear. What you're experiencing is the awakening of the spiritual self. The challenge of being a human is that the body, the mind, and the spirit are interfaced. And you'll see, when the soul starts to grow, it stimulates the mind and also the nervous system. And in your case, you're naturally already a little bit of a high-strung type. Somewhat like I was when I was on earth. I used to get so worried about things and pace around my home. But you see, like my vicar said, that day I was in such a wreck. He said, did you ask God to come to your dinner party? What you must do is ground your energy in spirit. So first, it was important for you to ask for God to be present. And then you will rest in the peace of God. And then the next thing, my dear, is to balance yourself with your earthly self. This means spending days of literally walking on the earth. And if you can, take off your shoes and stand on the bare earth. You know, the earth is a grounding energy. Humans in their physical form must connect to the earth. 
And if we would do that, it will bring you peace. And remember on all things, do not judge yourself. Some of your high energy comes from your worry too much, my dear. Oh, your, your mind is in the right, your heart is in the right place, my dear. But your mind goes in overdrive. And this is limiting your own growth. You don't have to worry about being perfect or having all the answers. You only have to commit to love. So simply love yourself, my dear. If you love yourself, in turn you will feel peace and then you will love others without stress and anxiety. I hope that gives you some help, my dear. Thank you so much. All right, so we have um, a question. I really feel this one um, pulling on me. Um, this question comes from Maggie who says, I miss my Aunt Betty. She passed long ago. Does she have a message for me? Oh, my dear. Just a moment. Flash your whistles to come in here. Oh, hello. Can you hear me out there? Well, I got to say, in terms of your auntie, we're not able to bring her through the medium tonight because his vibration cannot sustain it. But I can tell you that if, if you would just be patient, you'll be hearing from her in about three months. Would it be okay if I asked one more final question? Sure, Maria, can... please do. Oh, wonderful. Okay, let me find this one. Um, very exciting. This one, uh, this question is, how can we visit the mystery schools that spirit has to offer us? Are there certain protocols to do so? Oh, well, so that's a very good question. And you know, Alfred, who spoke earlier, he's been exploring this, and he's told me a lot about it, you see. The realm of the mystery schools is actually existed very much on the etheric plane. The secret is that one must learn to connect with the etheric plane and then all the mysteries are available for exploration and study. Over here in the spirit world, people never tire of learning. They have the temple, the Egyptian temples over here. They have the halls of Atlantis over here. The great masters of Lemuria, all over here in the spirit world. And so if you seek to know the mysteries, you must understand how to access the etheric realm, the spiritual realm. And this is done through focused meditation. You must calm your inner self to where you can receive and be received. The masters over here oftentimes work with the initiates or those wishing to be initiates but it requires an inner stillness. If you reach within yourself until you are calm, you see, you see, everybody inside the human body has a vibration. This is something I've learned. When I was on the earth, my vibration worked at such a high rate that I never settled down enough to actually hear the words from the spirit world. And now since coming, I've learned that if I can settle down enough, I can receive. And so if you wish to understand and explore the mysteries, you must make yourself ready to receive a master and a guide. You yourself, my dear, might I say, have a connection to ancient Lemuria, and you would do well to do research. As you study the knowledge of the mind, you will also connect to the knowledge of the spirit. And you would find that as you do your reading, things will appear in your mind that were not in the book. And this is a sign to you that the spirit world is reaching to your mind to give you more truth. And you know, as I've said earlier, you must ask for it. So do not be shy nor hesitant about asking for our guidance, for we will bring to you all that you need in order to receive knowledge to be able to be part of the mystery 
You see, the whole world is a grand mystery. You know, people think that because I die, that suddenly I understand it all. Oh, no, no, my dears. You will continue to learn once you leave the body. You will continue to learn. And nobody has all the knowledge, not even us spirit guides. But I tell you, once you cross over here, you will understand what we say when we say that all the mysteries are accessible. The infinite mind of the creator has allowed all of us to be infinite like him. We share in the very nature of God by our own soul light. That light will never die, it will never dim, and it will go on forever. This alone is a mystery worth contemplating. But to answer your question, look within, begin your study, and then wait upon the call of the masters. And if you ask for them to invite you in, you will be invited in, my dear. My blessings to you. All right, everybody, that was the channeling from Bob for our 26 channel panel 2016. And we know a lot of you have asked where you can get that channeling. It's not on this YouTube channel. It never was public. Uh, those who saw it in 2016 saw it, uh, and no one's seen it since. So this has been unseen since 2016. If you didn't know about the channel panel in 2016, you never saw it. So, <laughs> which means most people probably did not Which see means it. almost <laughs> all of you did not. <laughs> so we, we are going to release them. And um, I had an idea, but I don't know if I should bring it up right now. There is another video of him that also isn't released from the other channel panel. The 2018 channel yeah, panel. And yeah. I don't know, um, Cola, when you're going to be getting... Um, his laptop so that you can get back into his account. But Rob and I wanted to offer, because I know you guys, you, you were talking about how normally you'd be, you you would be moderating Wiccan Wednesday and all, but I thought if you wanted to have that, since no one has seen it except for whoever attended, um, whichever I, year, I can't even remember. 2018. Was, was it 2018? It was. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we can give you that privilege to be able to if you want since no one's seen it and i know you guys miss getting together and and seeing him if you want we can withhold putting the, that on the channel panel um the uh the channel panel youtube channel um until after you guys have had a chance to see that and come together and because there's there's one more it would be like getting together and seeing him again so and it would give you the opportunity to for people who haven't seen it to see it before we put it on our channel which would get more people to your channel um and get more people to know what's going on with bob and, and to give them the memorial in the way that you want to do it yeah, too um, exactly i also do have to make a quick announcement guys there will be no matrix minds tonight um uh matthew got a hold of me and said it is definitely not going to happen tonight <laughs> so tonight's um, about bob so it's pretty fitting <laughs> yeah well i mean so, matthew runs his, his yeah his show every uh wednesday and not this wednesday guys he has uh some things going on at his house but he will be back friday so check it out on the matrix minds on facebook if you haven't checked out that channel you should check it out um thank you guys for the donations tonight too we we appreciate it extremely uh it all goes to help with the network and with the channel. And we also appreciate how much you guys have shared your experiences and memories with Bob. It was such a powerful thing to look through and read all the comments that you guys shared. Thank you for, for doing that guys. Yeah. And again, um, for those of you that are listening, go to Bob's YouTube channel called spirit channel, you type in spirit channel, or if you even type in psychic Bob, his channel will pop right up. Check it out. Like I said, he has over 2,500 videos that he has been doing. He's like one of the first like original YouTubers too. He's been there a long time. A lot of amazing wisdom from start to finish. And 
mostly daily uploads. So, oh, I mean, yeah. you watch one a day, you'll never catch up. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It'll take you 10 years to catch up. It's amazing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, and please uh, like, subscribe, keep those algorithms up, share, and um, keep that spirit alive. And we know that Cola is going to keep it going, too. So. Yeah, and we'll have Cola Bob's uh, YouTube channel in the description uh, also. Yep. So that anyone who wants to go there, she'll be doing a lot of the Bob's work to keep his work into the light and into the awareness of people. Because what he had for so long is so worth seeing and so worth keeping up. So you guys uh, keep an eye on her channel. Keep an eye on Bob's channel. And if uh, Cole Bob gets control of that YouTube channel, I'm sure you'll see more uploads and more archives uh, and, and things that... We'll keep on the energy of Bob. I had a rough week this week after hearing about Bob's passing. Mm -hmm. He was a good friend, um, an amazing, amazing human being, and one of the greatest uh, spiritual teachers out there. And he was a genuine, kind soul. So thank you, Bob, for blessing us with your love, your wisdom, all the uh, experiences you've had that you shared, your channeling, your psych, everything. Um, you made the world a better place for being here. And, and I know he'll continue his work on the other side. Thank you, oh, brother. Oh, yes, he will. Yes. Thank you, brother. We love you. And we send you all of our love, um, Cola, and um, to all of you. Um, before we go, I just want to have us just take a few seconds to just close our eyes before we do that sure. sorry, uh, sorry just to remember guys for those of you who watch the show regularly uh next wednesday at 10 o'clock eastern 7 pacific we have ben evans uh who's coming on the show as our guest he's an amazing guy he's an australian mate so it'll be fun <laughs> to listen to him talk <laughs> for those of you who like australians go ahead mom close us out tonight sure I just wanted us to close our eyes or stare at a candle, whatever you want to do, whatever how it helps you to connect to your heart. And I just want everyone to imagine Bob's smiling face, his smile and his eyes gazing into yours. And breathe in and remember that love and that light. And I really mean that some people just throw around the word love and light, but this, this was a man and now a spirit guide who truly radiated and radiates love and light. Feel that penetrate into your heart. And find your own personal smile, your own style of light. And know that Bob is still with us. We just have to talk to him, and be willing to listen and see all the signs. It's a very powerful being. So let's just take 10 seconds of silence. Feel your feet on the ground, connected, rooted. Live your lives here on earth. We never know when our time is going to come, but it will come when we go to the other side. So feel the roots from the earth coming up through your feet, 
up through your entire body, all your chakras, your aura, your physical body, and imagine it, imagine it branching out to the top part of your head, branches and leaves spreading wide up into the spirits, into the spirit realm. All the leaves of love spreading out to our dear friend, Bob, us, the community, the roots, the tree trunk, the branches, the families that we are, the people that we've never met. And each of us, a leaf, a representation. And this is how he's able to connect. <clears throat> Nicola, obviously you are the flowers <laughs> on this tree. Do you all feel his love? And imagine his spirit coming to this trunk of the tree that is all of us as a community together and giving us a big hug. And he's thanking us just as we are thanking him because it's been a very beautiful experience. Thank you so much, Bob, for sharing your heart with all of us, for being so genuine, for showing us a path of love and compassion. And to your beloved Cola, who will be continuing on making sure that the fruits, the work, and the light of your love continues to be shared with the world. And also, we get to enjoy the light that she shines as well, that we all shine. May you rest in peace, Bob. And we know you must be having a blast over there. The amount of knowledge, the friendship, the camaraderie, you already built it so beautifully over here. We hope you're having just the most wonderful time. And I know you're also looking over us here as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, Bob. And, and if you take one thing away from today... One thing, I mean, some of you never heard, uh, seen Bob's work or heard of Bob before today. And this is a very powerful thing for you to meet him this way after he's already left the physical presence. Mm -hmm. But if you remember one thing, at, remember to ask yourself the same question that Bob was presented in his near-death experience. How have you loved? How have you loved today? And if you can't answer that, then we need more love in our hearts, more love to one another, mm -hmm. which is the Bob legacy. Yes, it is. It is the Bob legacy, the psychic Bob legacy. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming tonight. I, I don't want this to end, but we've definitely got, got to go for the night. We're going to be here next week uh, with Ben Evans at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Seven Pacific. Thank you, Kalina, for a ride and co-host with me tonight. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I wouldn't Hi, miss it. I know. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, Cola, for, for modding for us today and, and yes. for carrying on Bob's work afterwards. The world really needs that. And thank all of you for the donations. It really means a lot. Um, Don't we, forget your walks and your, your purple cords. Yeah, purple cords. <laughs> and 20 and minutes a day of meditation. That's or nice. at least 10. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get something together. Uh,
with Cola to, to do another thing and we'll send her over that video that's never been seen before of Bob, just like the one tonight, but a different one mm -hmm. um, and a newer one, one that's more towards the now, two yeah. years uh, later than that one. It wasn't one. long ago. And that way you guys can see another thing of Bob's you never saw because most of you who love Bob, you've seen most of your stuff, most of his stuff. And um, this will give you a chance to see something you haven't seen yep. before. Visualize that laptop getting quickly and safely into Cola's hands. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if she gets the laptop, then that means she can get Bob's uh, whole channel taken uh, into her control, which means you guys will have more. And, and, and the algorithms won't punish the, the work, and she can keep it fresh and keep it running and keep all the stuff uh, that she feels is great to upload. Because mm -hmm. that's who Bob would have wanted to have control of the account. Bob really loved her. Thank you guys for showing your support to her, to Bob, to us. Um, we really thought tonight would be a beautiful night to do this. So we love you guys very, very much. Thank we you for coming you. tonight. I'll see all of you or those of you who want to be here next week. I know a lot of Bob's people stopped in, which is great. And I love that. But, um, all of you who come back next week, we'll see you next Wednesday, and that's uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific on the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, which is a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network, which is simulcasted at the Matrix Minds Media. Amazing channel. Check out their Facebook page and rebroadcast at Forbidden Knowledge News Network as well as Conscious Awakening Network. We love you guys. Thank you, and we'll see you next week on the other side. Good night, you. guys. Good night. Love you.